Hi there, this is Trolls from ATO, and in this video we are taking a look at ATO Symphonic Shadows. This is a library containing over 7,000 different orchestral effects for both strings, brass, and woodwind ensembles. As you can see here, it's using our new general user interface, and there's a lot you can do with that in terms of synthesizing the sounds and sound designing them and using textual convolution delays and all the beautiful things we have in our Chaos module and so forth. So Symphonic Shadows is sort of a twilight library between traditional orchestral recordings and then all the beautiful things you can do with sound design. And as you're going to see in this video, we'll demonstrate a variety of the individual patches, uh, both some of the sort of traditional orchestral patches, but also what we've done in terms of sound design and all the crazy cool things you can do with the user interface here. And if you look, everything is actually loaded for the longs here. We actually have multiple banks here. If you notice down here, you can see in the keys, these are the key switches and these are the individual samples. But within each of these presets, you have a variety of different samples here. So there's way more than I could possibly demonstrate in a video, and this is going to be a reasonably long video. Um, so I'm just going to play a couple of individual samples, but I'm going to go through all the individual banks here so you can get a sort of a feeling for what kind of territory we're in. So as you can hear, we're certainly in the twilight zone when it comes to what is orchestral, what is sound design, what is sound, and the instruments are treated vastly different. And there's so many samples here. Again, I'm just going through individual patches and just triggering a couple of samples here, but there's so much material in this library. Let's continue the journey here and listen to the short notes. Uh, obviously, we're listening to the longs before, but as you can see here, we have a variety of short notes here as well. And again, each of these patches here have a multiple slew of samples in them. So a lot to listen to, and I'll do it in the same fashion. We're just gonna go quickly through them here so you can get a little feeling for um, the sort of versatility and diversity just with the strings here.
So the shorts are a lot more percussive in their nature and a great supplement to the longs here. You can do these long clusters and all of a sudden you go like Rung. So all this sort of core building blocks are already established for your normal aleatoric stuff where you have your longs and then you have sudden interrupting notes. But we also have downers and risers. So sort of up motion and down motion pitch wise for the strings here. They're actually beautiful and they really help expand upon the catalog of what you can do with the more effects like strings. So let's say that you need those sort of kind of sounds. You can do that with the downers here. Let me just show you. So those were the downers, so everything in a down motion. We also have the risers, so the opposite here, where the sounds are going to be rising in a variety of different ways here. Let's venture into a little more lightness. Um, this is our string bonus patch. We actually recorded the strings in octaves, sustains, and with tremolos as well. Uh, this is not your normal multi-sample library, but these can be cool in combination with effects. But uh, let me just demonstrate right here um, the sustains and the tremolos. They're kind of interesting and not your normal sustain sounds. We also multi-sampled uh, a variety of short notes, uh, not your normal spiccato or staccato, but more like pizzicato, conlegno, batak, and then we also created a variety of synthesized patches around as well. But let me just demonstrate a couple of them here, um, the pizza, the legno, and the bartak.
as you may have noticed, the sound in this library is somewhat on the drier side compared to Cage or Majestica or Dagieto. This was recorded in a smaller studio location. But this was just a little glimpse into what I would sort of say is the acoustic part of the library. Let's try to venture into the more sound design variations. We actually have a variety of presets in the library that are very alternative in terms of their use of sound design. And in this particular one here, we're going to be using our gate a little bit and then also our form, which is our textual convolution delay. It actually allows you to create other textures on top of your normal delay. So this is your normal stereo delay. But this guy down here has a variety of unique custom impulses that are tempo synced, but also creates a texture. So combining gating here with textual convolution reverb on Hell Falls 3. And it's a neat addition because it really allows you to tempo sync the effects. Um, you can right click on anything down here. I have this guy uh, assigned to my mod wheel right now, so you can sort of sculpt in real time with it. But it really allows you to do tempo sync effects. So where some of these effects are sort of more floaty and rrrr, if you want a sort of more stuttery approach to them, use the gate tool on here. And you can actually also control the rate of the gate here. Let me show another effect here created with um, the sustain effects. This is more of a dreamy synthesizer pad. So subtle and powerful. Um, we have another one here, and I don't know why this one actually reminds me about a church organ. And as you can see here, we have the filter modulator turned on here. When you click this guy here, you got the modulator and you can sort of sculpt the filter here. And this one is interesting because it's not just that we had the filter modulation here, we also had the gator. And it's not just that you can control the tempo of the gate, but you can also control the specific rhythm here. Uh, so if you want to create really elaborate rhythms, you can use these guys out here to mark when you want the gate to trigger on and off. And then on top of that, we had our form textual convolution. You can hear particularly the end of the sound, it had a more sort of echoey, texturous uh, kind of sound. Let me show you another quite disturbing patch, actually. Uh, this is not going to sound anything like uh, it normally does. There's a variety of things going on here. Again, we're using our textual convolution delay here. We also have additional chaos effects. So you can see we have two convolutions, our stereo delay, um, and it's been EQ'd a little bit as well. It has really disturbing sort of weird echo to it. And the echo is coming from the textual uh, convolution delay down here as well. This next one um, is also using our textual convolution, but this one is also playing around with our pitch. You can actually adjust both the microtone here and the coarse tone of your pitch here. So you're going to hear something that's notably darker here using our twisted two. And um, yeah, just check it out. It's cool because it allows you to do dark underscoring with essentially just one patch. And I'll give you a variety of other um, demonstrations in this video how you can actually do that. It doesn't always require to have a lot of stuff when you want those sort of more dark textual clusters that are sort of disturbingly just lying in the background. Uh, let me show another preset here. Isn't that cool? It's actually made by using our stack function here. And when you click stack, um, you can see when I unclick it here, it isolated just the sustains here. But when I click it back here, you can actually highlight as many patches as you want and all of a sudden they're combined. So in this case, we had both the sustain and the tremolo playing. 
We also had the Gateron and additional uh, textual convolution reverb here, the last prime uh, running here in the background as well, just creating some really awkward, weird, dark textures, stuff that you can't do with normal orchestral stuff and stuff that you can't do with normal sound design because we're right in the that twilight zone between traditional orchestral effects and more sound design. Let me show another one here. Isn't it wicked? It just shows how much you can use our new user interface here and how far it actually goes in terms of pushing what you can normally do with orchestral samples and all of a sudden you have all these tools to mangle them. Uh, let me show you uh, one more preset here from the strings. The sci-fi riser. And in this case, you can see the pitch was actually turned up here. So uh, even if you take dark strings like cellos or basses and you start up-tuning them, they get some really eerie textures to them and a little bit of gating uh, on this particular patch as well and a little bit of form. So these are really good to use. You actually also have um, a randomizer here. If you click this uh, question mark here, it actually randomizes all the sample parameters here. So uh, let's just see what happens. Let me uh, pick another um, sound here and let's uh, listen to what happens if we take it on the, let's try on the softy. Wow, um, all of a sudden, uh, that did not sound so soft. Let's try one more time. Uh, let's take it on the wicket here and let's uh, randomize one more time. With randomization, anything can happen. So uh, sometimes it's gonna be super gritty like we just heard. Other times it's gonna be something like whatever this is gonna be. All right, cool. And as you can see, like it's just one click and all of a sudden you've created something entirely different somewhere between orchestral or sound design or whatever you want to call that sound. That was perhaps just more sound than anything. Uh, but I think it goes to show with this user interface here and the ability to randomize quickly. We also have a randomizer up here for our top parameters here. You can actually control both the stereo width, um, amplitude envelopes, pitch envelopes, and I'll get into those as well. Next up is our Symphonic Shadows brass section. And just like the strings, we have longs, risers, and shorts, and a variety of other things. And as you can see here, this is just the longs. Again, we have multiple samples and multiple banks that each contain multiple samples here. So there's a lot. Uh, but let me just, um, in the same sense with it with strings, just go through uh, a couple of samples from the individual long patches here for brass. And that last part was actually me holding down different keys at different times. Um, these are really tight in terms of their tempo. So if you go like duck, duck, duck on the keyboard, you're gonna get those woo, woo, woo in terms of the orchestra sort of going up to full crescendo uh, on the longs here. Let me also uh, demonstrate the risers here. So we have this uprising sort of motion just like we had for the strings.
it's funny just sitting and going through all the patches it sort of feels like you're caught inside of a stanley kubrick movie or something uh let me show you the brass shorts as well uh here um as you can see we got six different banks just for the shorts One of the unique things about the interface is that you can really create rhythmic effects that are also tempo sync to your sequencer. So in this case here, I'm gonna be playing a patch called Afterlife and you're gonna see how it sort of syncs to the tempo and I'll explain how it does it. So it's pretty simple actually. In this case, you can see the gate is turned all the way up here. So you have these two guys here creating that separation note. So you get that roo, roo, and you can do it for any patch. Or, and if you want to dial it down here, you just sort of turn it down. So it's a great way of tempo syncing into your composition and you can also do it at different tempos. Let's say 16th in triplets. And I personally prefer to right click these guys here and assign them to my mod wheel on another CC control. They're just great to sculpt that way so you can sort of sculpt your way in them. Uh, let me show you um, another example here as well of uh, using the gator again to create tempo synced effects. And this next one here, uh, it reminds me a little bit about uh, Hitchcock's The Birds. We call it Close Encounters. You can also do these cool things where you're um, almost like blowing through a tube, but very strong. We call it the death wish, but it's sort of a growling, blowing motion. Like, whoa. And in this case, we had the filter LFO turned on here. And the filter LFO is actually also tempo based. So you can control what tempo you want the filter to modulate in. So if you want really complex and very fast modulation of it, you can take it up here and you get something. And you're gonna get a very fast modulation of the filter here. You can also do this cool trick by using our pitch envelope where you can actually bend the sound. So it's not just that we have risers and downers, but you can actually do it artificially here using our pitch envelope, I'm sure. And that one was using our form textual convolution delay down here. You can hear that in the end of it. It sort of had a very unique sound. Uh, let me also try um, this guy here. It actually reminds me sort of like, um, we call it Godzilla, but it has sort of dinosaur-like quality to it. One of the cool capabilities of the library is also if you're into more epic scores and trailer design and all that stuff, you can really do some cool things. Let me play uh, with the Godzilla 2 patch here. I actually find it more almost like trailer-like in its sound. And to me, this is really where Symphonic Shadow stands out. It's not just that we have a wonderful deep sample collection of orchestral effects, but it's also the ability to mangle them and make something entirely different out of them, both using our top rack here of effects, but particularly using our front face effects here and the backside if you want to get into that with our chaos effects as well. One of the other cool aspects is the ability to build clusters, sort of ambient clusters. And in this case, you can actually see that the tuning is down 12 semitones here. So really, really dark cluster building. But you can actually use this library to make complete scores uh, in the sort of darker realm just using one patch. Let me just play a little bit here with the Hall of Madness and then I'll show you what I'm talking about in terms of really building more elaborate clusters.
A really neat trick for creating very unique patches and do it fast is to click this sign here. This is our stacking function. So you can see right now Dystopia 1 and Dystopia 2 patches are loaded at the same time. You have to click it in order to activate it. If it's unclicked, you can only choose one patch here. But if you click it, you can actually select as many patches as you want. So in this example here, I'm just going to use the combination of Dystopia 1 and Dystopia 2 and then do sort of an elaborate cluster building. You're going to see me just play down here in the keys, but you can really do some advanced clustering and underscoring in the sort of dark Realm. That's why I'm saying like you can actually create a full underscore just with one patch. Let me try. There's no voodoo magic behind it. Uh, essentially, I'm just uh, holding down a couple of sort of cluster keys. And then I'm rolling over the keyboard to sort of to create these sort of dark, fat effects. Uh, let me show you um, another sort of cluster building method here. A um, little in the same uh, realm as we just did. This is our low and eerie one. And as you can see, this one is also down to 12 semitones. And to me, there's so much life in these samples. It's really a raw library. You will find a lot of sort of polished orchestral libraries. This is more on the wild and dark side. There's really a lot of grit and emotional intentions uh, in the samples. Another cool thing, besides from sort of building textures and elaborate clusters, is also that you can do your rhythmic synchronization. So in this case, we'll play with a preset called the Ripper uh, using Growling 1 here. And you're going to see it's very, very tempo synced. And it's just to show the Gator again how you can create very unique uh, rhythmic signatures. It doesn't have to be 4-4. Four, four. You can actually create more complex rhythms by using the Gator in a non-symmetrical fashion. You can also, again, choose the tempo down here. Let me show you. Let me show you one last one here uh, with the brass. This is called a scanner. Next up is the third chapter of Symphonic Shadows, our beautiful woodwind section. Let me start out by playing with the winds long. And in the same sense, we had long and shorts and all that stuff for strings and brass. We also have it for the woodwinds. Check them out.
Let's remember those days where we didn't have access to massive sample libraries that allows you to pretty much write an electric symphony uh, at your fingertips. It's for me when I sit and go through this, it's just a reminder like how far we've actually come. Uh, let me also demonstrate the short notes here for the woodwinds. Let me show you um, another patch here. Let's uh, be a little more abstract. You can see we've downtuned the woodwinds uh, 12 semitones here, and they're really great for creating sort of ambient, low, eerie, weird cluster patches. It's also cool to take the longs and run them through the gator with the wind winds here, really creates some cool results. It's just super neat and a way to sort of synthesize the library, for example, to use the gator on the string. You don't normally hear it, but it really helps if you have a built up and you use the gator in terms of creating synchronization to your composition. So they go like, ah, da, 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 da. Uh, if that feels sort of into the rhythm of your composition, it sounds great. Another way of creating sort of interesting connection uh, between the sounds of your composition is to use our pitch envelope. So in this case, we're going to listen to a couple of woodwind trills, but I'm going to use the pitch envelope here. So they're sort of going to have an uprising motion. There actually isn't any sort of uh, motion on the core patch here. If I take the pitch envelope here and you can hear, <laughs> you can do these funny things with them. All right, but we gotta wrap the video up one place or another, and this is probably a good time to do it. Um, I hope this video has given you a little bit of insight into Symphonic Shadows and how deep this library actually goes in terms of covering aleatoric effects, but also in terms of its sound design capabilities. And in wrapping up the video, let me also thank Elijah Day Paris, who actually created the original content for this library in his Scream collection. This library is all his Scream libraries combined into one giant library called Symphonic Shadows. But let me just wrap the video up here with one last example. In this case, we're gonna be listening to the woodwinds again. You can see I clicked the stack symbol here and I took five different patches and threw them all together. And then on top of that, I dropped the pitch and there's a little bit of gate on it and just creates the coolest effect. But thank you so much for watching the video. I hope we'll see you in the next one. And we're certainly gonna be continuing our journey down with orchestral effects. We've got a lot more coming in this department.